Hi, friends. This is another episode of the Red Photo Podcast. Thank you for watching and or listening. I hope you're having a lovely day today. Today, we're, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of photos with you guys and uh, break them down, talk about why they're awesome, uh, talk about why uh, I'm a great photographer. It's the first photos by me, so it's, it's, just, it's, it's basically going to be how fantastic is James's work and how can we basically be him with every fiber of our being, and uh, I can get the photography part down. I, ha I haven't. I'm not really sure how to make it where you grow red hair, uh, freckles, all that stuff. There's a lot of genetic stuff involved. I'm sure we'll have a we'll have a homeopathologist uh, on sometime. We'll we'll get to that. But for now, let's talk about a couple of photos. So the the first one that I wanted to uh, chat with you guys about is a shot that I captured recently at the racquetball court. Me and my wife like to go to the racquetball court at our apartment complex once or twice a week, have a good time. It's a wonderful just uh, bonding. Is that what married couples do? A uh, uh, time-spending experience. We have a lot of fun. We laugh. She gets mad because I come to her side. That sort of thing. But it's also a wonderful way to exercise, and it's also a wonderful way to exercise while doing something with your mind. So racquetball is you have to build technique, and that's how I like to exercise. I like to have sort of a very compelling goal or, or something that keeps my brain occupied while I'm doing the, the physical work. So racquetball is good for that. Uh, so the photo that I captured, uh, if you're listening, obviously you're going, whoa, what's, how? How am I gonna, how am I gonna know anything? You know, what are we, I'm gonna be like, and the the line, this is a line over here. It's really straight, and I'm I'm happy with how straight it. You're gonna be like, what's going on? Well, I happen to be, I happen to be a thrilling linguist. I don't know if you know that, and I will do my best to explain what is going on in the photo and create a mental image uh, for you guys who are listening. I wanna. Uh, this is a podcast after all. So uh, the photo is is looking through a window. And in this window, there's a grid of black lines. And I think it's maybe this is done to reinforce the window, or I, you see it in schools sometimes as well. And uh, the lines are in a grid, but they're sort of diagonal, so it's a bit more of a diamond shape. And I'm looking through that window. It's focused on the window. The background is out of focus. The background is the racquetball court. My wife is walking towards the camera in the photo, and the racquetball court is all around her, just pure whiteness. And then the floor is like a wooden floor, as a racquetball court would have. Uh, nails or cement uh, or, or maybe uh, fire would be a, a less safe floor. So, and there's also lines running across the floor at perfectly straight to, to you know, encourage you to obey the rules, which we don't do. But, so this is the photo, and what's, what's, I really enjoy the photo because it feels very minimalistic, and minimalism is a fantastic way to go with your, with your photography if you're into that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a, it has a lot of elements of very natural, or I, I guess you could even, like, I guess, uh, biological, neurobiological intrigue to us as humans, minimalism, and this photo is a fantastic example of the adage, which, per, which is so pervasive in photography culture, and I'm so glad that it is, that the best camera to have is the one that is with you. And in this case, I shot this photo with a, with a iPhone 7 Plus and iPhone 7 Plus, grammar police, uh, an iPhone 7 Plus, uh, and I think I was shooting at the 50 millimeter on the 50 millimeter lens. You can switch back and forth between the two now. And I, I had another camera with me. I could have, I could have certainly taken the photo with that camera. But this was, this was the easiest solution to what was in front of me. And it also made it very easy to share. And it just, it was the camera I needed at that moment, right? And uh, this is also an example of knowing the limitations of your camera. I knew that this particular iPhone could pull it off. I knew that, I know that the iPhone of yesteryear could not. 
I, I know that even just having a 50 millimeter lens, which I, it looks like that's what I shot. I'm not entirely positive. That looks like what I shot it with. Uh, even just having that was, was a strength, right? And knowing the limitations of your camera is not just about knowing what it can't do, but it's about knowing what you can do with it. What are the characteristics of the camera, the sensor you're using, this and that. And uh, it's very important to do that. And, and in terms of growing in the in your artistic ability, knowing the limitations of your tool, it's like a hammer. If the hammer has a plastic handle, you're you're not going to be able to really get too far with it. Uh, it's 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 gonna bend. It's gonna warp. There, it's gonna be a. You're gonna have to buy more of them. In the end, you're probably it's probably just better to pay for a hammer with a grip that can withstand the force of hitting a nail or, uh, or, you know, hitting, throwing it through windows of cars, whatever you do in your free time. Um, so anyway, that's, you know, the hammer power hour, but we'll get, we'll, I have another podcast for that. The next one that I would like to chat with you guys about was the next one. I was going to look at that. Okay, here we go. This is a photo by a user on Instagram. I've been following her for a while. She does great work. Her username, if you want to look her up, is Golden To Do, uh, so G O L D E N number two D E W one word, and this is a shot of a New York street, and what we have here is buildings kind of, kind of going. So you have them going down on the left and the right of the frame, going away from the photo from from the photographer, and. <laughs> and also in the background, you have a uh, a wall that's sort of parallel to to us, the viewer, and so it creates this sort of box feeling, almost like what you would have if, in a racquetball court. And the there are a lot of colors going on here. It's actually a, the opposite of of what uh, what happened with my last photo, where it was very minimalistic, not you know only a couple of colors, but the. There are a lot of photo, uh, a lot of colors, but she was very intentional about the way she shot to create to 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 create a very intriguing color palette here. I can imagine there there is a distinct possibility that there may have been buildings she could have cropped out elements that she intentionally left out of the frame, especially in New York City. They do like you know, there's a purple puke wall or like somebody wearing a uh, somebody wear, wearing a you know who shot Tupac shirt just wouldn't work with the wouldn't work with the overall gestalt of what she was trying to create for this photo and so she she shot intentionally to 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 generate a very intriguing color palette and I think that's fantastic here uh, lots of reds and and some some you know, muted blues and and there's a also a yellow taxi and in front of that taxi is the most interesting part of the photo which is these two people walking across the street parallel to us, the viewer, in lockstep, like so. See, I'm doing actually a professional lockstep uh, interpretation. Went to college for this. You, you only learn this stuff at Berkeley. And, uh, and so this is what makes this photo really shine, is this expression. I would encourage you to think about, when you're looking at a photo, think about that photo minus the most interesting thing in the photo. Or think about that photo with... with the the element that's mo the most interesting doing something that is maybe a little less intriguing or think about their legs in a different spot would this photo look the same why is this photo so intriguing to me and uh and it really works out well here especially having two people side by side it's like is is doubly awesome that's very hard to do and good work and having the taxi as their backdrop provides for a lot of interest as well uh behind that taxi is a white truck and it could have worked, but there's a distinct possibility that this photo may not have been as interesting without that yellow taxi. So thank you, yellow taxi. They're still good for something after the Uber and Lyft. Um, okay, the next photo I'm going to take a look at is one um, by a guy named uh, Daniel Inke uh Hold on. Make sure I get that name right. Yeah, Daniel, uh, Daniel Innskeep. He is... He actually runs a channel with his friend and I believe love interest called Mango Street and you should check them out if you haven't they uh the fantastic art focused really polished they know what they're doing with an editor kind of photo photographic teaching things and 
uh, uh, it's it's a fantastic channel. They also, and this is this is something that you I actually ironically don't see much from YouTube creators who teach photography. They also have ridiculously compelling work on their Instagram accounts. Ridiculously good stuff. And uh, one of the photos that is falls in within that category of ridiculously compelling makes me want to vomit from joy. Vomit, joy vomits, the best kind of, of, of all the vomits, is a shot that was captured in Hong Kong of basketball court. In the foreground, you have a sort of a green tarmac, and uh, around the sideline of the basketball court is sort of this more orange tarmac and very sort of muted, pastel y kind of colors going on there. Uh, and then you, perfectly center, you have a basketball backboard and then, you know, the fence running behind it. So it's like an urban basketball court. No, Nobody in the shot except for some people hanging out behind the fence, but they're not the main point of the, the photo. Uh, in the background, you have these buildings that are semi-dilapidated looking, sort of grayish colors, and they're making this sort of stair-stepping pattern, if you will. And it's it's very elegant, very intriguing, poetic to the eye. Um, and... I appreciate this uh, this take on on the composition of of Hong Kong. Uh, I appreciate the way that he lined up all these elements together, and it's just an urban landscape. It shows that you don't actually need a person in a shot for it to be com- particularly uh, for, for it to be wonderfully compelling. It's 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 just a shot of an empty basketball court, and you can make that work. And that's a tough thing for me sometimes because for me I'm always trying to work people into my photos to the point that when, when I don't have people in my photos I sometimes I get a little lost I'm like what how do I make this like I, I I've learned to rely on people a lot and it's a good it's a good thing to practice without them uh, I think that will grow you as a photographer but which is the opposite problem that a lot of people I think a lot of people are in the position where they need they they, they normally short, shoot without people and they kind of need to figure out how to work people into their shots. So it's an interesting predicament I put myself in. But uh, but the color balance and the and the contrast in this photo, the way the way that all the the colors work together and the more vibrant greens and and uh, hanging out in the front on the bottom uh, with the basketball court. And then the sort of grayish, all the colors really work together and it, it makes a lot of sense. It's well done here. So be very intentional and thoughtful with the colors you choose when you're on the street or the colors that choose you. Mmm, I got spiritual. Coffee, that's some Starbucks coffee. Uh, okay, and then the next photo I want to take a look at is another one by the lovely Daniel. Thank you, Daniel, for your work. You are lovely. Uh, he, this was one that is assumedly taken with a drone. I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and say that it was probably taken with a drone, or else he threw his camera really high. And it's a shot of a street in LA, and palm trees lining either side of the street. The street sort of curves into the horizon, and on the left side, where you no longer, so the street kind of goes away, and then. And then as you go more to the left of the photo in the background, you see the L.A. skyline. So it actually creates this very uh, well-done effect of, of the principle of the leading line, where you have a road going into what's – it seems like it goes straight to L.A., which is probably silly. I, I doubt it. We're in, like, a neighborhood. I'm sure it cuts off to another road, and then cuts to another road, and then cuts to a road – one of those – the big roads called uh, – collector roads or whatever city city planning i i like to study small parts of a lot of ridiculous topics but it's like a collector road or it collects all the cars and um so this photo is it it looks like the road goes straight to la and it's a, a very pleasing effect, very well done effect. Another thing that he uses well here and this is this the reason i uh one of the main reasons why i've added this photo to this list of photos that I want to talk about today was a lot of people seem to think that that when they get a drone they can fly up in the air and that they can kind of just point it at anything and it creates a great photo there's a difference between somebody who is a drone operator who saw something pretty and took a photo of it and somebody who applies photographic fundamentals to drone photography there's a huge difference there and 
And uh, this is a great example of that. And I would encourage you to push yourself if you have a drone to create work that is that really goes beyond what what I see out of most drone photographs and videos as well. Uh, a lot of people seem to just be completely ignoring the fundamentals of 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 compelling work. Uh, and it's particularly in the videography world, the, these people who take their drone, fly it up in the air, and they think it makes sense to turn their drone mid-shot and like leave that in the end result video. It's very frustrating because it breaks the, the effect of the, of the majesty of the shot that's going on. And so I spoke out about this on Twitter. I got Trump to retweet it. So it's, it's you know, it's making its rounds. Anyway, uh, the, the sun in this photo is actually perfectly in the middle, which is also quite intriguing. And there's a strong sense of depth because the, the shot is, is actually that he's down in, he's down kind of on the level of the palm trees. So the closer palm trees are, are feel closer and it creates this this sense of depth it, it doesn't feel like a flat 2d dimensional kind of thing that plus the light creates a strong sense of depth which is of course very pleasing to us so that was a fantastic photo well done uh the next photo that i would like to speak to um, talk to or talk to the hey photo how's it going where are your plans where are you going to go to college uh what was this okay here it is this is a photo by the same guy of a skater uh, pretty dramatically grinding a a sick line or something like that, doing a line. You know what they call it? Uh, at a skate park, I assume in L.A., palm trees in the background, what have you, very nice warm evening light. And then there's this very geometric quality to the skate park, steps and ramps and what have you, and then the, um, the skater is sort of in the mi middle ground, skating down, and he he's striking a very dramatic and poetic pose. And this is the this is one thing that I think is extremely important if you're going to take photos of skaters, to find them in very dramatic instances of movement. Uh, there are a lot of photos where you know you you have the you have the the guy who's skating and then his foot is he's just pushed like he just pushed off a little bit. And so his foot's just kind of like like angled, almost like a flamingo would. But there's not enough separation. It, it just doesn't look right. And it's, it and it's a photo that I would just scroll past. It's not interesting. And but I, what I love the skater photos that I love the most are the ones that the person's like their tongues out of their mouth. They got their arms are all sp spread out because they're balancing, and you can feel the flow of what's going on. You can feel where they've come, where they are, where they're going, right? And I love that, and and uh, you know, I I hope to try to create that in my own work. Uh, the lighting here creates a strong sense of depth, and the uh, geometry is very intriguing. And I think that, I think that with skating photography, a fantastic technique to employ is sort of the sit and wait patiently <laughs> technique where you frame up your background, you get all your elements aligned, uh, and particularly with skate parks, like, like I'm saying, there's a lot of geometric elements and you get all, you, you get everything kind of where you want it and let the skater come into your shot. <clears throat> Pre-focus, let the skater come into your shot and then capture that very dramatic pose, uh, which is hard to capture sometimes because most skateboarders, uh, suck balls and they can't figure out how to stay on the board, uh, which I'm not blaming them. I would do a much worse time, but, but, uh, but, but there are a lot of skaters that <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You watch people on the X games and they just, they're just making it look easy. They're just flying around. Most people can't figure out how to do that because skating is actually extremely hard. And it's one thing to get your balance and go, but like to jump off of a thing and then like slide your board down the railing of a staircase is pretty advanced stuff. So well done. Much love to the skating community out there. Please stand by. Okay, I'm back. I had to get my two pineapples for this final photo. If you're uh, listening, the I have two pineapples sitting on my desk. Why do I need two pineapples for uh, my final photo, you ask? Why not have two pineapples for my final photo? This last photo is also by Daniel Inskeep, and 
and it's a shot of a man on stage. He's singing. He's 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 a lead singer, seemingly yelling at the crowd. Uh, looks like some one of, some sort of hardcore experience, probably you know yelling at the crowd about how he hates his his family, and uh, as one does. And in the background, you have these two sort of light sources uh, balanced, kind of. Not perfectly, but but they help kind of balance the photo out a little bit and um, interesting point, you know, intriguing points of light. And then in the background, you have separated from the singer, it, it, so 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 as if the the background is not being clipped by the singer, the singer is not being clipped by the background, which is which is quite interesting. You have a face of uh, I, it's it looks like some sort of stained glass depiction of a face, probably Satan. Uh, and so what I love about this photo, what makes this photo really work is the expression. And that's like 90% of why this photo works. I think a lot of photographers miss the opportunity to create really compelling fo- A lot of music photographers miss the opportunity to create really compelling photos because they don't take the time to focus on what the singer is up to, what their, what their body language is and what they're expressing. If you capture a an emotional expression mixed with really thoughtful composition and framing you have a winner of a music photo and this is something that takes a lot of practice and you don't I don't see a lot uh m- most music photographers immediately fall off in this in this realm uh and so i would say edit very very intensely when you're when you're shooting and when you're editing when, when you do music photography because a, a lot of photos have been the music is a heavily co- covered subject in photography and to create something really intriguing I, I wouldn't even you know what I'll take that back it's not even about how many people have done it before you a compelling photo is a compelling photo right and and when you're when you pay attention to the things that are fundamentally true of photography you will always create a compelling photo. So, with that said, um, did I miss anything else about this photo that I want to talk about today? What do you think, pineapples? <laughs> it's quickly, this podcast quickly got outrageous. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it for this podcast. I hope it brought you value today. Um, you can find me on the socials at James the Red on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, on you know Red Photo on YouTube. And please feel free to engage with me. I'd be happy to engage back with you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will answer them and possibly incorporate them into my content. I also have Lightroom presets on my website uh, and a Lightroom preset collection that you can check out called Street Essentials. uh, That would be much appreciated. Thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.